guys, this is Ashley back with another video. We got a lot to discuss. Um, new music from Ice, Mirage, and Katie, um, and the White King of Rap. But first, let's start off with Nicki Minaj, okay? So, it looks like fans are calling out Nicki Minaj because a few days ago, she did a show in Dublin. And some of the barbs overseas are upset at Nicki Minaj because she was more than 90 minutes late to the show. Um, they said that she left fans stranded in the rain. Um, her set was short. It was like 45 minutes. That's what the fans are saying. Um, and she took a lot of breaks. So fans are calling her out, um, saying that she is being unprofessional. Now, Nicki Minaj responded to this on station head and she said i struggle with time not by choice and i'm going to try to improve because i don't think that's how you should treat people who love you and care about you okay so that's what Nicki minaj said on station head look like she is going to try to be on time for future shows we'll see okay all we can do is see um, if she tries to improve. And honestly, I think that all Nicki Minaj has to do is just, you know, give people refunds or uh, go back to Dublin and do another show. OK, that's all she needs to do. Um, and I'm sure the fans will be fine with that. But when I saw Nicki Minaj a few months ago, um, she was late. And it was probably roughly around 90 minutes. She was roughly around 90 minutes late. And to be quite honest, I was expecting Nikki to be late. I was not expecting her to be on time because Nikki's usually late. Um, but I saw a lot of fans who went to the Dublin concert saying that, oh, she spent hours on Station Head. She spends hours on social media. You know, why is she always late? And I think that her team got to tell her, even though she probably already knows, but her team probably got to tell her a show starts earlier. Like if a show starts at nine o'clock, if she goes on stage at nine, that she needs to be there by seven o'clock. OK, for hair and makeup and whatever else. So that way she won't be late. I think that would be a very strategic move that her team should be doing. OK. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Now, speaking of Nicki Minaj's second leg, uh, for her world tour, um, a lot of fans want Nicki Minaj to drop her sixth album. Okay. Before the tour starts. Um, I don't think that's a great idea. I think she should drop a single maybe. Um, but definitely not a full album. She just put out an album seven months ago, and I think it's important, especially now, not to oversaturate, okay? When you oversaturate with albums, you know, um, people tend to get sick and tired of you. I think that's one of the reasons why Champagne Thickums is slowly falling off is because he puts out too many albums per year, and I think the same thing is going to happen with the Charter Obsessed Races in the future. I think it would be better if Nicki Minaj just put out a single, Okay, didn't she say she wanted to do more pop songs? Put out a pop single, um, hopefully with another A-list artist and a music video, proper rollout, and that's all she really would need, okay, to get the fans excited. I don't think she needs to roll out a whole new album. I don't think that's necessary. She just put out Pink Friday 2, and she put out, you know, new singles um, while Pink Friday 2 was out. And she has different deluxes for that album, so I don't think that's necessary. Now, moving on to Doja Badu, she receives a major cosign. Idris Elba, um, who is an actor, um, says he wants to collaborate with Doja Cat, but not in regards to acting. He wants to do music with Doja Cat, which is very interesting, okay, because he raps and DJ. Um, I don't think anybody really sees him as a rapper or DJ, but I guess he does that as a hobby, okay? And so... He said he wants to work with Doja Cat and Mark Ronson. Let me know how y'all feel about that. I don't know if Doja Cat would work with Idris Elba, even though he is a prestige um, actor, because at the end of the day, you know, she does have something against black men. No shade. 
But she did work with ASAP, Rocky, and Gunna. Okay, and I believe she also worked with Young Thug and Wayne. So maybe she'll give Idris Elba a chance, okay? Um, but it feels like she do have something against certain black artists. I noticed that. Mostly black women artists. I feel like she don't like to work with a lot of black people now that she went mainstream. I've noticed that about Doja Badu. Interesting. Now, moving on to Botch and Bitter. Is Botch and Bitter recruiting Nicki Minaj's ops yet again? Now, Botch and Bitter's publicist, Precious, I mean, um, what's her name? Patience. That's her name. She posted a series of alleged Botch and Bitter collaborations, okay? Um, and meetings that Botch and Bitter will be doing, I guess, in the next coming of days. Now, she has Cardi B and Rob49. As we know, they are putting out a collaboration next Friday. But she also got another Cardi B collaboration on the list. And a lot of people are speculating that it could be Doja Cat. Okay. I don't think she'll cover up a Megan Thee Stallion collaboration because Megan not popping. She just sold 66000 first week. They did a collaboration for the Wannabe Remix and for Bozos that flopped. So nobody's really checking for that. But people would be checking for a Cardi B and Doja Cat collaboration because then they both will be taking shots at Nicki Minaj. Okay, I can see Doja and Botch and Bitter collaborating and taking shots at Nikki. Um, I also could see Botch and Bitter doing a ladies night. Um, I remember she said she wanted to work with Lil' Kim, even though it's been years since she hasn't worked with Lil' Kim. But I can see her sampling ladies night or doing a ladies night and recruiting like Scratch Off, Doja Cat, Megan Thee Stallion, okay? Um, all of Nikki's ops on one song. OK, so it looks like Botch and Bitter will be coming out with more collaborations since her solo music has been flopping. Now, Ice Mirage dropped her new single. Um, I did it first featuring Central C. OK, why is everybody dropping music videos on Thursday instead of Friday? I noticed that like Katie also dropped a music video on Thursday instead of Friday too, which was very weird. But anyway, the music video was cute. Okay. Um, you know, I do like the chorus for the song. I don't care for like her bars or Central C's bars, but I do feel like the chorus is pretty catchy. Okay. Um, you know, I would just like to hear the song with just the chorus instead of Ice Spice rap in her verse. No shade. And then also, I noticed that her and Central C don't really have any chemistry. No shade. There's no chemistry between them. It's very dry. Um, you know, if they're trying to, you know, make the public think that they are a couple. It's not working for me. You know, y'all can believe what y'all want, but it's not giving what it's supposed to give. They didn't really have much chemistry, in my opinion, especially in the music video. But also, fans are calling Ice Mirage out. For copying Doja Badu. A lot of fans said that Ice Mirage was copying Doja Badu's Agora Hills visual. Okay, that's what they were saying. Um, also, people were saying that she copied Doja Cat's cyber sex music video. Um, let me know how y'all feel about it. I didn't really feel like she copied Doja Cat though. I didn't get that feel from Doja Badu. I think people are just tired of Ice Mirage, so they're saying that she copying everybody. Now, she did copy Nicki Minaj when she dropped Fat Gut. You know, she definitely copied Nicki Minaj's flow and, um, you know, hairstyle and clothing. Um, when Nicki Minaj first hit the scene, she definitely copied Nicki Minaj's whole tire look. But I don't feel like she copied Doja Cat, especially when it comes to Agora Hills and Cyber Sex. I don't feel like she copied Doja Cat. I think people are just looking for any way to diss Ice Mirage. Um, but I would give this song overall hmm, a six, a five. I really only like the chorus. I don't really care for her verses. Um, and I don't really like when Central C raps like that, to be quite honest. No shade. But 
um, the chorus is fire. Now, moving on to Megan Thee Stallion. Her new hot single, Mamushi, reaches a new peak at number 55 on Payola Fly Global with 1,900,000 streams. It's the third highest song by a female rapper on the ranking currently. I think that was the song that is going viral on TikTok, which is funny because Megan Thee Stallion was dissing um, you know, rappers and artists that go viral on TikTok. Um, wasn't it in the song Boa? She said, you only hot on TikTok or something like that. And now the only single that's really making any noise right now from her latest album, Megan, is only really popular because of TikTok. So that's very interesting. But we already know Megan Thee Stallion is a big hypocrite. So I'm not really shocked. Now, moving on to... Queen B. Queen B is one of the three black women to have the most number one hits on the Hot 100 this decade. Okay, so Nicki Minaj has three, Megan has three, and Queen B has three. Okay, everybody else we don't really care about on this list. We're just focusing on the black women. But where is Doja Cat? Shouldn't Doja Cat be on the list somewhere? Because Doja Cat has went number one a few times. So I wonder why Doja Cat is not on that list. That's very suspicious. But congratulations to Megan, Queen B, and Nicki Minaj, who did make the list. Um, well deserved. You know, Queen B went number one with um, Texas Boredom, um, the Savage Remix, and I believe it was um, Break My Hole. Okay. Then Nicki Minaj went number one with the Saint So remix. Um, then she went number one with Trolls. And then she went number one with Super Freaky Girl. Meg went number one with Piss, thanks to Nicki Minaj, the Savage remix. Um, and then also WAP. Okay, so like I said, congratulations to all these women. I'm just shocked that Doja Cat wasn't on this list. That's very interesting. Now, moving on to Kendrick Lamar. Not Like Us is now the best-selling rap song in 2024 by a total units in the U.S., surpassing Like That. Um, congratulations to Kung Fu Kenny. Not really shocked. Not Like Us and Like That deserve Grammy nominations, okay? Um, I think Kung Fu Kenny should take all the Grammys um, in the rap category. It was just his year, okay? Now, we're going to get to Eminem's album, but it was Kung Fu Kenny's year when we're talking about rap. No shade. Now, moving on to Katy Perry. She dropped Women's World. A lot of people are giving it mixed reviews. You know, I see some people liking it and some people not liking it. I thought the music video was nice, but I feel like the music video didn't really show how it was a Women's World. If you guys know what I mean, it felt like it was just kind of you know, pandering to men. That's what it came off to me as, you know. It, that's what it felt like. Like she was pandering to men um, by trying to say it's a woman's role while you're just naked, the whole music video. But the music video was nice. I did watch it a few times on mute. So, you know, I give her her tens. Katy Perry looks a little bit skinnier. Did anybody notice that? Is it the Ozepic? You know, she looked a little bit skinnier than she has been, you know, um, a few years ago. Maybe she was always this size. Maybe I just didn't notice, but she do look a little bit skinnier. But she looks amazing. Her body is insane, especially for somebody that's, you know, in her 40s or late 30s. And so, you know, I give her her 10s for the visuals. Okay, the visuals is a 10. The song to me, um, I'm not crazy about the song. It's a women's world and you're lucky to be living in it. Um, very basic lyrics. I do feel like she's trying to use feminism, you know, to push her music. And, you know, she's done that before. And I feel like it's just, you know, a corny narrative to try to push, especially when, you know, you're working with Dr. Puke. It still just doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, so I really don't care for the song. Like it won't be in my playlist. But the music video is nice. You know, I don't really care for like propaganda um, music being pushed. Like when you're trying to push a certain narrative like feminism, um, 
Even though I don't feel like you believe in really feminism because you want to be working with Dr. Puke. So, you know, feminism pushes women's rights and Dr. Puke has taken several women's rights away. So, you know, that's interesting. But I really genuinely don't really care for the song like that. Even if Dr. Puke wasn't attached to it, I don't care for the lyrics like that. It's just kind of basic. Um... And it sounds dated, but the music video, I give her 10s for that. She looked amazing in the music video. Um, I don't feel like it really pushed the narrative of the song, but, um, you know, it's still a cute music video. So I give it a 5 out of 10. You know, I'll give Katie a 5 out of 10. Now, moving on to Paola Board's top 10 rap albums of all time. Okay, they got Nas Illmatic at number one. Dr. Dre, The Chronic, um, Lauren Hill, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. I feel like when it comes to female rappers, you know, Paola Board and the industry, when we're talking about rap albums of all time, they only mention Lauren Hill. I never understand that. I get it. You know, that album is a classic. You know, Lauren is an icon, even though she only got one album. But there's other rap albums that have been iconic. Just like Lauren Hill's. I mean, I think Missy should be on this list, you know, for um, Super Duper Fly. You know, I feel like that was a classic album. I mean, Foxy don't get no recognition. I'm like, why Foxy never get no recognition? And same thing with Kim. I feel like Kim don't get a lot of recognition anymore like she used to. But I think a lot of people only praise Kim because... You know, her and Nicki Minaj were beefing because if you really think about it, Kim didn't write most of her raps, especially in her prime. You know, she didn't write most of her raps. Biggie was writing for her, especially in the beginning of her career. So, you know, no shade. Um, that's probably why she don't get a lot of credit. But they got Outkast, B.I.G., Life After Death, Tupac, um, All Eyes on Me, Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, Eric B. and Rakim. Paid in Full, Camel Face, The Blueprint, and Slick Rick, The Great Adventures of Slick Rick. Okay, so let me know if you feel like any albums were missing off of this list. Um, you know, I feel like they should give Missy something. I think Missy has a classic album under her belt. Um, you know, Foxy deserves some praise too. And No Shade, Pink Friday is a classic album to me. But I can understand why it's not on the list. OK, because it's kind of going to be weird to put pink print next to Illmatic and the blueprint and the miseducation of Lauren Hill because it's different times. OK, um, even though, you know, not all those albums came out around the same time, but those were probably early 2000s, 90s, you know, 80s albums. OK, um, those aren't recent 2010s or 2020 albums. So it probably would have looked weird to put the Pink Friday album on that list. So let me know how y'all feel about it. Um, and if you guys feel like any albums were missing off the list. Now, moving on to Champagne Thickums and his obsession with Kung Fu Kenny. So it has been revealed that Champagne Thickums hired a model for his OVO clothing collection and fans are saying that it looks like Kung Fu Kenny's wife, okay? And I do see similarities. I do see a little bit of a similarity to Kung Fu Kenny's wife, although Kung Fu Kenny's wife looks prettier, no shade. But Champagne Thickums will be receiving Donkey of the Day. I mean, this is kind of creepy. Why are you obsessed with somebody else's wife? Because you can't get your own? OK, I mean, after Rihanna left you, you just can't get it right. You can't keep no girl. No girl really wants you unless it's them Instagram models that want you to buy them Birkins. I just feel like you're embarrassing yourself at this point, And no wonder Serena Williams is crimp walking to not like us. She can't stand you either. OK, none of your exes have anything nice to say about you. You have a bad reputation. You need to stop stalking other men's wives. Go get your own and stop stalking. Thank you. Now, the White King of Rap drops his album. And he did not mention a few people in his album um, that could be controversial. He did mention 
Megan Thee Stallion again. Um, in one of his songs, he said, "Cause I spit a bar so hard, Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj will scissor, cut it out." Okay, that bar was a little bit corny, though. You know, no shade to the White King of Rap. You know, that was a little bit corny. But that was his song, um, Antichrist, um, that he mentions Megan and Nicki Minaj. Because, obviously, they was beefing. Or still are beefing. He also had a bar in there about Kung Fu Kenny and Renaissance. He said, now just travel inside the mind of a hater because I don't see no fans. All I see is a bunch of complainers. Um, Kung Fu Kenny's album was cool, but it didn't have any bangers. He also mentioned J. Cole and Wayne and Jordan Lucas. A lot of people felt like he was throwing shade at them, but I don't feel like it was shade. I think people just can't fully comprehend Eminem's lyrics, okay? Um, I think he was really dissing the fans, and that's what you guys say when you talk about Kung Fu Kenny and J. Cole and Jordan Lucas is that, you know, they don't always make club bangers. That's the narrative that y'all push. He, I think he also mentioned Wayne too, okay? But he had a different line for it. The narrative that people like to push is that Kung Fu Kenny can't make club bangers, but he just made Not Like Us, okay? Y'all say that about J. Cole sometimes. Y'all say that about Jordan Lucas and rappers that are deemed more lyrical, Okay, so that's why he, you know, put that out there. Wayne can make club bangers. So he had a different bar for that. But um, overall, I would give this album like an eight. You know, I don't think this is Eminem's best album. But um, I do think he did a good job with the album. Okay, because he's a lyrical genius. Some of the bars were cheesy. You know, I'm not going to go over the Diddy bars because those were inappropriate. He did have a few Diddy disses in there. He did mention Caitlyn Jenner and blind and deaf people in the album. So we're not going to go over those because those are inappropriate too. That's one thing about Eminem. Like sometimes his bars are too inappropriate. Like, you know, he might take it too far. Um, and that's why people say that he's trash now. But um, I feel like Eminem always been like that. He's always been outside the box. He's always been um, a person that doesn't care about Bars that create shock value. So I don't know why people are complaining. And then he also talked about people trying to cancel him. Generation Z trying to cancel him, which is not going to happen. But anyway, um, I got some hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description and have a great day.